Greetings, you mighty earth-shaking, history-making champion. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry. God is with you. God is for you. God is your defense. You can't go under for going over. God's making a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert for you. And he's doing it because Jesus said in John 10, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And we already know by like 14 lessons already that that word life used there, there there's like five or six words used for life if you have D uh, w. E. Vine Expository Dictionary of New Testament Words. You can find out all those words. But anyway, the word Jesus used was Zoe, Z-O-E, and it literally means the life of God in you or the God kind of life. Jesus came, he said in John 10.10, 10, that you might have the God kind of life in you. Now, the gap between what God has promised us and what we Christians are experiencing is too big to be ignored. All right. God said he would take sickness out of the midst of us. Exodus 23, 25. You shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and water and I will take sickness out of the midst of thee. Uh, Deuteronomy 7, 15 says almost the same thing. Okay. He said that he heals all of our diseases, who forgives all of your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Psalm 103, 20 or Psalm 103, 3. Okay. He said he would supply our every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19. And he said he'd give us the desires of our heart, uh, Psalm 37.4, all right? He said no evil would befall us, neither would any plague come near our dwelling, Psalm 91.10. 2 Corinthians 2.14, uh, he said we'll always try, always, always triumph in Christ Jesus. Never lose is what it sounds like to me. He said you can ask what you will and it shall be done for you. John 15, 7, all those verses and more, okay? Sadly, the verses I just quoted to you have not been the experience of the vast majority of Christians today. And I think we should find out why, uh, why it's not our experience. Let's look at the book of James, chapter uh, one, verse four, and start there. Let me look, okay. Let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But at, let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think he shall receive anything for the, from the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways." Okay, I needed a little help on that. I think I could have quoted it accurately, but I looked, okay? So, the words wanting nothing, and God gives to all men liberally, and the term it shall be given in that passage of scripture that I just sort of quoted, sort of read, okay? Uh, given him, asking you shall receive that your joy may be full, all those things that I, I said, uh, shows us that God wants us to live without want and that he's ready to give us everything that's been promised us in the Bible liberally if we ask in faith nothing wavering. However, the last part of James 1 verse 4 through 8 may explain at least in part why so many of us wonderful Christians lack in some areas, right? Fail to receive what God promised. I'll take sickness out of you in the midst of you. I'll supply all your need. I'll give you your heart's desire. Call on me, I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not, all those great things. James 1, verse six through seven says, he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let not that man, a double-minded man that's tossed to and fro, think he's gonna receive anything from the Lord. I think because of the, the vast amount of input from the news, from social media, from uh, situations around us, people on the job, uh, preachers that don't know how to receive from God and take the promise of God off the page of promise in their Bible and get it real. So they tell you a good story that God saves Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out of the fiery furnace and say, he'll do the same for you. And you're excused, you may be dismissed. He didn't tell us how, so we got to find out how. So if we're not receiving what God promised and what God said and what he provided for us, 
we may be of two opinions. That's what double-minded means. We're of two re opinions regarding whether or not God's going to give us what we ask for. And a lot of times we go by the circumstances. We try to judge spiritual things with our five physical senses. Well, I asked for this. God said he'd give it to me. I put my finger on it and said, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, this is what I want from you. This is what I need from you. Uh, it's not what I'm experiencing in my life. I ask you to do this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're doing that. But three days later, when it doesn't materialize, the book of Hebrews says we cast away our confidence. So we become double-minded. Well, I guess maybe God didn't want me to have that. I guess God didn't really mean what he said. Maybe it's spiritual and he doesn't really want to supply my physical need. We make excuses for not materializing the promises of God. No, let's you and I take the promise off the page of promise, hide it in our heart, think it in our mind, speak it with our mouth, use it in prayer, use it in praise, and manifest it, praise God in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We may be like a wave of the sea without even knowing it, being driven with the wind and tossed, and thus we waver without even knowing it. It occurred to me that the opposite of wavering and being double-minded, which means the being of two opinions, means to be established. Acts 16 verse 5 says, we are to be established in faith. You got to know that because the life of God's in you, and the faith of God's in you. He, Jesus is called the author and the finisher of our faith or the developer of our faith. So you have the faith that you require. Jesus said a grain of mustard seed would move a mountain. So you got to just find the promise, hide it in your heart till you believe it. And like an elevator going up to the next floor, the next floor, the next floor, pretty soon you're going to be on the floor you need to, to appropriate what you need from God. All right. We're to be established in faith. Hebrews 8, 6 says that we have a better co covenant established on better promises. Hebrews 13, 9 says that our heart needs to be established in grace. It's God's grace. Oh man, I cussed yesterday, so today I can't get my blessing. Oh, I, I, I looked on the wrong uh, YouTube channel or I did whatever, and so t I don't feel like I'm worthy to uh, have an answer today. No. Be established in grace. God loves you all the way regardless. And as you walk with him with all of your heart, you're automatically forgiven. And if something's obvious, then confess your sin to God and it's be like puking out poison. If you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But we don't practice sin. Amen. God said that we need to be established in righteousness uh, in 1 Thessalonians 3.2. Paul sent Timothy to Thessalonica so that the believers there could be established. God sent me to you so that you could be established in Zoe, the life of God in you. From those great scriptures, we know for sure that we're to be established in faith, be established in the promises of God, be established in grace, be established in righteousness, and be established as a believer. That's what God wants. He doesn't want you wavering, praise God. We might think we're established in certain fundamental truths, when in reality we may not be. So just go back and read. Pastor, I, I, you're going to tell me about the woman with the issue of blood. I can quote it as good as you can, Pastor Glenn. Maybe you can, but faith doesn't come by having heard three months ago that story. Faith comes by hearing. And I'm going to say hearing and hearing and hearing, Romans 10, 17. You've got to continue to hear that word. The word established means you're going to be firm. You're going to have a stable base. You're going to be fixed in a position that can't be altered. You're going to be entrenched and fixed and permanent and rooted and secure and settled and unshakable and all those other things that you can maybe say rooted means and established means. I want you to be established in the fact that the life of God is in you. The Zoe God is in you to put you over, to make you the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, so that whatever you put your hand to is going to prosper. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry. Keep listening. Keep feeding your faith because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, Romans 10, 17. And so hear the Word of God. Keep watching this series on Zoe and like and subscribe below and have a great day. As a matter of fact, let me give you a little call to action. Leave a comment below saying, I've got the life of God in me. Make that affirmation and make it all day long. 
and make it at some point every single day so that you renew your mind to you've got the life of God in you. Have a great day.